our Captain 145 Pro. I think this is a little carrying bag. I don't know. MIG gun, stinger, ground clamps. I have a feeling it's still steel. Toothbrush, strap, and then the machine itself. This is our Captain's new Pro lineup. This is the MIG 145 Pro, even though it's flux core only. So what does the Pro version get you other than, you know, obviously a sweet little carrying case? A bigger digital display, maybe Bluetooth, not quite sure, but a better processor with that auto set mode, which in turn should take out the guesswork and give you a lot better welds. Of course, we're gonna test that out. Spoiler alert, it can do flux core, stick, and a lift TIG. Okay, awesome. Look how thick this manual is. I'm just saying, this is actually a pretty detailed manual for me to not read. Wait a second, look what I found. The first of its kind for Bluetooth connection? Do we get a weld remotely? I, I don't know, it says to look for the app and then of course I don't see an R-Captain app. You get a little warranty card, let's knock that out right off the bat. It's a 24 month warranty, which is awesome. One of the first art captains that came out, I was able to get my hands on and give some feedback for. And one of them was to have printed out or have a sticker on the machine of their suggested settings. Keep this handy, you'll use it often. It is a 110 volt only, no 220. Uh, it's 145, it's supposed to be more of a portable type welder. You guys know my little feelings on this little toothbrush, chipping hammer. They added a handle and then they also include the mounting for that person that likes the strap. They give you an extra MIG nozzle, which uh, with this being flux core only, I'm gonna go into a little tip here pretty soon where you don't need this. They give you a couple little contact tips and another one within the bag itself. Another 0.8. Uh, comes with wire. Did I mention that already? Thank you. All of the smaller type machines that I've seen like this before, the gun is actually hardwired into the machine itself. So this little dense connection, it's got a little hole in here. And so then that is obviously going to go through and, you know, connect with your little drive chain for the actual wire itself. Follow the little assembly guide and it really does go pretty simple. My only suggestion is don't let go of that wire until it is all the way fed through. If you are having feeding issues, the first thing to check is that this is not too tight, that it's not cranked down and not letting the wire unreal. And then also you've got a little tensioner button up here. If you can see on in here, I know it's kind of cramped, but hey, you get a nice compact sized welder. Oh, check that out. We've even got the little sticker we got to peel off. Whoop. With the machine on, let's get over to the actual flux core mode. A nice feature with this machine is once you pull the trigger, it will come out pretty slow, but it will kick up and go really quick when it realizes that you are trying to feed the wire and not trying to weld. Since I got 0 0.03 wire, make sure that contact tip matches and you are set. We don't need that. I am interested on why they went with one of these cheaper style um, and I'm assuming even, even though this has got a nice copper tint to it. I'll just talk right here in the background, pull my magnet. I have a feeling it's still steel. Had me fooled for a second. I knew there was no way this was going to be brass or copper would have been way too flimsy. Just like that. We're already hooked up. Switching over to the flux core, so we're gonna change that on the mode. And then it looks like here we can change the wire diameter. So we got 0 0.030, 035, and 040. I am going to be putting in some 0 0.030, so we'll go there. Right here, you could just keep it on the manual, uh, your amperage right here. You can do that, or you come down to this little Ooh. function right here, and this is where you're going to choose the actual thickness of material you're doing, and then supposedly the pro settings take care of the rest. Let's not forget to save that tip and use some uh, nozzle gel, sold separately, of course. And you'll notice that I actually don't have the MIG nozzle here. Two fold for this, because 
This is not a MIG machine. We're not ever gonna be able to hook up MIG gas and I can see the tip a lot better without that nozzle. I don't even know where I put it on there. So let's test it out. This bead is running really smooth. So the program setting for that eighth inch thick material is spot on. It is flux core, so it's a little dirty, but once cleaned up, check out how awesome that weld looks. Look at how cute this is. A little carrying case with some pouches. Let's just pretend we showed up to a job site and uh, see how quickly we can get stick welding. These little dense connections are super easy. You've got a positive up here, a negative up here. It's got this little tiny notch right there. So you just stick it in there with the notch and give it a little twist. And then your ground obviously is going to be the opposite. So this will be uh, going to the negative terminal, same deal. You just grab the, find the little notch, stick it in there and you're good. So it looks like stick mode is straight up. You got the stick mode and then your amperage control with the dial. First one is a 332nd 6013 and I'm running it at 70 amps. Next up, bumping it up to a 7018 rod and doing this one at 95 amps. The last mode is the TIG, so we can change the amperage right here. TIG is pretty simple setup, let's test it out. All TIG torches like to come with these long nozzles. I don't like those, I switched it out for a stubby kit. So yes, there are a couple extra parts that you need to get along with tungsten and filler rod if you want to TIG weld. This is a very basic TIG setup in that the gas does not even throw through the machine. It goes, th throw through, did I say throw through? There's this little nozzle coming out here that that's what gets hooked up to the gas. And so then it will go through that red line and then it connects in through the actual TIG torch and up through the sheathing and out the gun or torch. It says this is a lift style arc. So what you're gonna see me do is I am going to actually touch the tungsten to the workpiece and lift off. Thus the lift style start. You will notice as I'm moving along here, this is a constant amperage. I don't have a foot pedal that's varying it. So I will need to go probably a little slower at the first and then I'll be able to speed up towards the end. That's just to be able to get a consistent well bead without having amperage control. Pick one up, use this card, and each process will turn out just great. Like and subscribe, we'll see you next time.